Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our virtual service here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Wailuku, Maui. Today is Sunday, January 2nd, 2022. So Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, please know that uh, there will be no confession in our service this morning uh, because Christmas is a time of salvation. Uh, next week, when it's the season of Epiphany, we will go back to confessing our sins. Uh, also, please know that the annual meeting this year will be at 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, after the 9 o'clock a.m. service on January the 23rd. January the 23rd, after the 9 a.m service. We'll get back to you whether that's going to be in person or via Zoom uh, given the Omicron uh, variant and the rise in the number of cases on Maui. Also in light of COVID, for the time being we are going to move the 9 a.m. service back outside into the courtyard. Uh, we will continue to have our 5 p.m. Saturday service out in the courtyard if it rains please stay home. Uh, we will not be risking coming into the sanctuary at this point. So uh, if you have any questions or concerns about that, please call me on my cell phone or the office and we'll, we'll uh, explain further. Uh, with that, it's time to begin our service with the ringing of the bell. Thank you. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and, and peace, peace to, to his, his people, people on earth. earth. Lord God, God heavenly King, King, almighty God, God and Father, Father we, we worship you, we give, give you thanks, we, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Christ only Son of the Father, Father Lord God, Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, our, your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now we'll have the reading of the lessons. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Sing aloud with gladness for Jacob, and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise, and say, Save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north, and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will lead them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd of flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine and the oil and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will give the priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 84. How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts. My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ 
who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace that he freely bestowed upon us in the beloved. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, who may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with your eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended and they started to return, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents didn't know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. Then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends, and when they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. Well, when his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Look. Your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. And he said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they didn't understand what he said to them. Then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. His mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and in years and in divine and human favor. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Well, I just read for you uh, the finding of the child Jesus in the temple, a very iconic uh, story from the Gospels. 
You know, I heard that story for the first time when I was about eight. And it was actually on the radio, um, you know, growing up on an island that was 95% Roman Catholic at the time, they would often broadcast uh, religious things over the airwaves. And I, I remember how struck I was by it, um, because the person who was doing the reading um, read it in such a way that Jesus said, did you not know that I would be in my father's house? Like he was scolding Mary. and. Uh, I, I don't think that that's the way that Jesus would have said that. I think he would have said it um, very softly and tenderly. You know, oh, Mom, didn't you know that I would be in my father's house? Kind of innocently. Uh, I think part of this was preparing Mary for things to come. Uh, he disappeared from her. He was found uh, later on. He disappeared from her. Um, the, the tomb was empty after the crucifixion. And then he came to his mother in the Cenacle. We know this from the, the book of Acts and that Mary was waiting there with the disciples and praying. So um, it, it sort of sets the stage for the notion that she's going to have to give him up and lose him. Uh, but ultimately she, she finds him again. Um, there, there are a lot of uh, things that we could say about, uh, about this story in terms of, um, you know, what it meant for Jesus to be teaching, uh, you know, what it meant for, for them to have to go back. Um, but what strikes me and why I wanted to um, come in front of the crèche this morning is uh, Mary, his mother has to go to the temple to find him. She finds him in the temple. Uh, I remember um, when I used to be a lot more physically active, um, especially when I started working out for the first time in my 30s, you know, and I actually told somebody, um, you know, I have to, I have to stop smoking and I have to start exercising because my body is a temple. Uh, and so, of course, I got laughed right out of the room. But um, it makes me think, well, if my body is a temple and Mary went to find Jesus in the temple, uh, maybe a takeaway that uh, we could glean from all of this is that we don't have to look very far to find Jesus. We just go to the temple and we go to the Christ within. Um, and to get in touch with that uh, would, be, would be really a wonderful kind of everyday advent in our lives, never mind the first advent or the second advent. But, you know, what a gift uh, to, to have this story and be given the idea that we simply turn in to find Christ and to, to get in touch uh, with that presence within. Uh, they say, uh, uh, we, we read last week, you know, um, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. They, I, like the, I like the theory that um, that's all about balance. Uh, bringing balance to the world, um, you know, where the mountains shall be made low to bring balance, the valleys shall be raised up to bring balance. Uh, wouldn't it be nice to know that we have that balance uh, within us if we simply take the time to stop, pause, and get in touch with that presence and to, to turn to the Christ within? Uh, so many ways to do that, you know. Um, you can do that through centering prayer. Uh, you can do that by taking in the sacrament. Um, for, for me, it's uh, sitting in stillness uh, with the puppies on my lap um, while they're asleep and uh, looking, looking at my uh, Santo Nino statue on the shelf of my television and just enjoying that symbiotic relationship that um, I can have with Christ uh, if only I slow down and um, 
clear the head and get in touch. But I'd be, I'd be curious what the spiritual practice is for each of you. Um, I've witnessed so many uh, different ways. Uh, one of the most touching was that I had brought a small Santo Nino to church one day and I was showing it to some of the ladies and um, they all paused and touched it and made the sign of the cross uh, because that was how they got in touch. Uh, whether it's through prayer, reflection, writing, meditation, uh, acts of service, or some combination thereof, uh, my, my prayer and my desire for all of us at this time of year and throughout the year, really this could be the catalyst, is to, to get in touch with Jesus who has remained in the temple and then playing with the idea that the temple is here. Um, what can you do to get in touch with that presence? What can you do to feel the warmth of that light? And how can we all uh, take the warmth of that Christ light from within and share it with the world uh, through our acts of kindness, compassion, love, uh, whether they be service to others, prayer for others, um, knowing that if we have a symbiotic relationship with Christ who dwells within us, uh, we also have a symbiotic relationship with the Christ that dwells in every human heart. Um, to get to that place, uh, we've got to travel back to the temple. So um, I invite us to, to take this Christmas time and to uh, gird our loins and brace ourselves for that journey back, back to the temple, back to the source, uh, where uh, no doubt if we're, if we're fervent and faithful in that endeavor, uh, we'll find the Christ child, the one who came to give us balance and the one who came because God loved us so much. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful Christmas gift to know that, and what a wonderful gift to share with the world around us. So um, let's go back to the temple, everybody, and find the Christ within. <laughs>
And now let's affirm our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed together. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, Almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now we'll have the prayers of the people. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. Pray for the province of Iglis, Anglican, du Congo. We pray for the Episcopal Church and the Most Reverend Michael and Mrs. Sharon Curry. We also ask your prayers for Robert, our bishop, and Mulkey, our priest, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for Joseph, our president, David, our governor, and Mike, our mayor, for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored, especially for William Passavant, Elizabeth Ann Seaton, Sarah, Theodora Syncletica of Egypt, and Harriet Bedell. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, our Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and heighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh joined heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.
peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.